So thank you for staying this long. Uh, I'm going to talk about a project we have proposed for the Maria de Maestu uh, program and it's uh, based on two concepts, one is data analytics to, to analyze data in the context of enhanced music learning. So, um, well, the team for, the, for, the, for, the, uh, for this project is uh, mainly composed of MTG people from people working in the music technology group and also is multidisciplinary, is also by Davinia, who just spoke. And we are in the MTG, we, are, we have experience in music processing and, and all the technologies related to music. And Davinia, as well, I don't have to say, she just spoke about her expertise, so we will be combining these two. And also we have some members or collaborators of the project which are external to the UPF. Gualtiero uh, Volpe from the University of Genoa, uh, they, they have experience in, in, um, in gesture capture image processing and then, as, you, as I will tell you, uh, this is an important issue in the, in the, in the uh, project. And also uh, George uh, Ball and, and Aaron Willamon, who are a uh, well, professor and postdoc in the Royal College of Music uh, in London, one of the like, most uh, influential uh, conservatories in the world and they will be very much uh, important in the sense that they, this is, they will be in dealing with the pedagogy of, of the project. So, to put this everything in context, I will show you two videos, very, very short videos, about two people with slightly different uh, expertise in the violin. So, um, oh, I forgot to put this. Hmm, I play it again. Also, yeah. Well, you can see more or less, and this uh, another player. Well, you get the idea. So the, the question is in this, what is required to go from person A to person B in terms of experience in, in playing an instrument? This is a complicated question. Probably at least we can say there's a lot of practice, but, but probably not only that. So, so that what we are interested in is how can we use technology to try to enhance this transition from A to B? Basically enhance the, the, transition, the learning process. So, so that's exactly what we intend to do. So uh, to put uh, uh, the project in Maria Maitsu project in, in context as well, in academic context, we have another project, uh, uh, an European Union project called Tell Me, and it is a H2020 project, uh, Research and Innovation Actions, and it's a three-year project and started very recently. And the partners are the, the usual suspects from the team uh, the slide. We are, we are the coordinators, then Royal College of Music, they are doing the pedagogy part, University of Genoa with gesture and image analysis, and then we have two companies, one is High Skills, who is a gamification company that they have experience in taking learning tasks, um, building a gaming uh, frameworks to try to make the, the learning process as a game. And then Psycho is a Catalan company, a Spanish company, uh, which will, uh, they will be in charge of dissemination and possible exploitation of the results. So the, the project, the, the Maria Maestu project is very in line with the, with the Tell Me project. So what are the motivations for, for the project? The, the, uh, the motivation is based in three observations. The first one is that music is, uh, well, the first one is not uh, the other one. The first one is that music, when you learn a, a music instrument, it, it, the benefits uh, are not only the, 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 the trivial ones that you learn to play an instrument, but there are many, many other benefits have been shown that cognitive, social and, and uh, well-being, there are many, many benefits that you get from learning an instrument which are not exactly or directly related to playing the instrument. 
The second uh, observation is that the music education is elitist in the sense that no, a, a small percentage of the population have access to formal music education, which means from the first observation that the, just a small percentage of the population can benefit from the from the from the outcomes or the or the, the or the benefits from music and direct benefit from music learning. And the third one is, is that even the people that are lucky enough to have music education, form access to formal music education, they, there is a big rate of abandonment. So many people start an instrument when they are ch ch children or, or later, and many of them drop out on the way, they just leave the music education, which is a, a pity. So our aims in the project are several ones, is wider the access to music education, and then a uh, wider the benefit or uh, have uh, more people benefit from the from the from music learning, then lower the abandonment rate that, that uh, I mentioned, and then this is uh, by doing two things. One is investigating how we learn music instruments, trying to to understand exactly what is the process. And as I was saying before, how we can uh, make the life easier for someone starting in person A to become person B, or at least getting more people getting. Longer, longer in the way on the, from A to B, and then uh, we create by this by creating a system and interactive uh, technologies that we have to emphasize complement music education. We don't want we are not intending to replace teachers or, or schools. It's just a complement to music education. So the the, the project overview is as follows: We have, uh, of course, the center of the project is the student, the, the music student. We have a set of sensors around the, the, the student and these sensors are cameras of, of different qualities, could be with ranging from a camera from a smartphone to really high the, um, the resolution cameras and the, passing from other types of cameras and also um, uh, sound, we want to, re to sensors microphones to, to record the sound of course, this is a, probably the central part of learning an instrument and of, again we will have like ranging from a very basic microphone from a smartphone to really high quality uh, pickups placed inside the, the, the violin and, and then also we will be collecting all the, the data through sensors, for example uh, ECGs, so we can record uh, uh, accelerometers uh, data where, uh, or EEG data and so on, we can, we can get all this data and then we have to understand exactly what's happening in the learning process. And then this, uh, the information of these uh, sensors will be connected to a computer, which on the, on the one side, on the one hand, will be providing some feedback, real-time feedback to the, to, the, to the student, could be in, the, in many, depending on the purpose of, the, of that moment, the, student, the practice of the, the, that student. For example, it would be practicing the vibrato and then it will be visualizing the amplitude and the, and the frequency of the vibrato and comparing this with probably other, other musicians because the second part uh, the computer is connected to or is providing is uh, access to a data set uh, uh, of expert performances. So we will have a, a set of uh, recordings which have been uh, done by expert musicians and then the, when, for example, practicing the vibrato, then the, the student can compare to different masters how his uh, vibrato is, is, is uh, related to the other ones. And then uh, the, this database is of course a multimodal database because it will be containing all the information from the sensors uh, acquired here. So we'll have sound, video and other kind of sensors. Information, I will talk about more about uh, the next slide. And the last component of the system is a kind of a small or um, uh, lower, lower scale um, social network in which students interact with the, with the database by, by exploring the database, by comparing the performance to the, to the performance in the database and also probably very interesting uh, uh, it will be how they interact among themselves because one, a student can decide to upload the, the performance on a particular exercise and the other students or teachers in this network can comment and give feedback uh, on, the, on, the, on, on the performance. So, uh, so then uh, about the, 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 the multimodal database uh, is called Repovis. This has been developed in the context of all the projects, previous projects in the MTG. And I will show you a, a very brief video just to have an idea of what it is, but how, what, is, what the capabilities of the, of the database as it is now. I 
I lost the sound for some reason. But the, the idea is that the, the, we have different um, the modalities for the data and we can choose which one we visualize. They are synchronized so we can see at the same time the video, we can see the gestures. Came back, uh, it was not me. And um, it allows for manipulation of the data. Once we capture the data, we can label it, we can uh, uh, explore it, extract higher level features from this data. can capture events and this is particularly what we're interested in to, to have gesture capture from from violin performances and then uh, audio and all the other types of data I mentioned before okay so if, we, if we go back to the to the system overview but where is the analytics there are plenty of places we can explore we can uh, get information from data one, the, the, the most obvious is we have a, a rich multimodal information stored in the database. We can apply analytics in many ways. I will, I will detail one of, of them, but we can detect patterns among gestures and, and, um, and sound about um, physiological uh, sensors and, and sound and so on. We can apply machine learning techniques to, to extract information from here. A second one would be that we will be exploring is taking a, a student uh, individual, we can, we can try to, to find patterns among the, 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 that person's interaction with the system, especially with the database, and then find pattern, useful patterns and probably intelligently recommend things to do to improve the, the, the music playing. For, it would be like a kind of Amazon, you take, it, it, it records your interaction with the system and it will be probably, depending on how good you perform some task, it will give you recommendations for things to do to improve to improve them and the last one is this interaction among people this is interesting how people the, the interaction among people uh, make them learn better or not so so patterns of interaction what are these uh, patterns these patterns have uh, an impact in the learning process so one one uh, analytic part, uh, part of analytics is not only like theoretical to understand how it works but it has a practical uh, uh, application is that it clearly recording this, uh, this material in the database is not cheap. We, we have to have someone, to, an expert to record it, we have to set up everything and we cannot exhaust all possible repertoire of violin st uh, studies. So then what happens when a violin player wants to compare himself to uh, the target uh, performance but we don't have that recording in the database one way, since we have a lot of information already in the database, would be to try to extract patterns and try to extrapolate uh, these uh, recordings to recordings we haven't recorded yet. So for that, we, uh, we have done in the past some work in expressing music performance. For the non-musicians, very quickly, what we listen, but it's not exactly what it was written by the, by the composer, is, is based on two things. It's based, of course, on the composition, but the, the piece as it's supposed to be, plus what the uh, musician adds to the, to the performance. So, so what we listen is a sum of these two, and probably since the, the, the score is something fixed and, and static, an interesting thing to model is what is the performer adding to the, to the, to the piece in order to interpret it. So uh, in order to do that, uh, I, we, we, um, we have been doing this for a while. We have, the, on the one side, we have the, the, the score of the piece, on the, second, on the other hand, we have the, the performer. We encode the, the, the score into some machine representation, like a, it could be a text file. And then we, uh, uh, we obtain the recordings and we apply signal processing techniques in order to obtain a, a symbolic description of the, of the audio file. So instead of having just a, another file, we split into notes and higher level events, like a MIDI file. And once we have this, we compute the difference between what it was in the score uh, compared to what the, per the performer did or, or played. And then uh, these are the expressive as aspects of the performance. And then uh, all these, we, we also uh, analyze the structure of the piece. 
we add we put this into machine learning in order to obtain some expressive performance model of that particular player we analyze them the model we can probably change some parameters in the machine learning or, or change some of the description and then once we're happy with the with the with the model we can now give a new score the one we haven't recorded and then the, the model will predict or produce a performance in the same style as the as the musician would have done if he had recorded the, per, the performance we have been there are many expressive parameters we, uh, a musician manipulates in order to to add, add expression to performances but the ones we have been uh, studying we have been studying is duration when a note it should be played louder or softer depending on in which context should be played louder or softer when the, the the onset of a note when a note in the score should be advanced according to the specification of the score or delayed when uh, the the note should be played uh, longer or shorter as, as stated in the uh, specifying the score ornamentation in classical music is not always uh, a big issue but in, in popular music like especially in jazz ornamentation is, is a, a big uh, expressive resource and when a note should be added to the ones specifying the score or when they should be removed and also we can predict gestures and we have all this uh, multimodal data we can say in which context for example in the, the, the what force it should be applied to that note uh, or, or what velocity of the bow should be applied to that note and also we have studied articulation so how given two notes in the score how they should be played should they be played like legato really really linked together or staccato very separated from each other so how we do this uh, uh, we have we start from the score we have we focus in one note and then uh, the the what we we characterize the notes for example duration and, and and pitch and also metrical strength where it appears in the in the score in the bar and then we characterize also the 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 notes around it around around the note the, the note we are focusing in and then for each note we extract a, a set of descriptors which i just mentioned so one by one we go and we get the descriptors from the score then we look at the at the at the uh, performance and then we focus on the same note but we look at what was played exactly for that note and we can then compute for example in, if we are interested in duration we can say how different is the duration the performed duration compared to the uh, specified duration and then we for each note we we, we can uh, annotate the difference or the, the the difference between the score and the performance what is exactly what we want to predict once we have this description we can apply machine learning algorithms this is a typical for example for duration a typical regression problem in machine learning and then we obtain a model again we can play with the parameters once we're happy with the model then we we give a, a new score the one we haven't recorded it will produce an expressive score in the sense that volumes and durations and then we have a synthesis engine in order to produce audio file i will play you uh, we uh, some uh, something we did with saxophone uh, uh, so this is automatically generated perfect but it is quite expressive compared to a straightforward rendition from uh, from um, the score directly to the to a synthesis engine so from gesture capture we have been also working we are very preliminary work but we have uh, I was saying there are different solutions like in terms of cost and complexity for different uh, uh, data that we want to collect for gesture the same we can go from from this end which is the high end and the expensive one these are qualysis cameras we are high definition cameras and normally you use a lot of them like 15 or 20 cameras in order to capture um, uh, all the articulations or the points of interest in the body and you can get these images that you always see with the skeletons moving around but these are very very accurate these are expensive you have to have a, a special room for set up for for this and this is what we are going to do for recording the, the master performances but this is not 
amenable to, to, take, to take it to a student level. Then we have the second level, which is like sensors, physical sensors that are placed in the, in the instrument, like in the bow, in the, in the violin, and they can track the position, velocity, force, and other, other uh, parameters of the performance. And uh, maybe I can even show you. Then, then you can see in real, in real time, you can, you can see the, the exact position of the bow, you can see the, 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 where the violin is exactly, you can calculate the distance to the bridge, for example, which is an important uh, timbral para, uh, measurement for, for timbral aspects, you can velocity and so on. And, the, and the, the, but this is still not very practical, it's very good for, the, for research, but the violin has to be wired, like you have to have a, a wire coming out of the, from the bow, and the violinists in general are very exact. they don't like to be put anything on the violin, so this is just for a bit for research. So the the a, a next step would be what we are trying doing now is using Kinect, which is a high resolution camera, which not only give you information about uh, to to the information, but also give you for every pixel the depth of the of the of the of that point in the image. And this is very useful to track in 3D movement. So we are starting to deal with this. And the lower end is the smartphone cameras or, or web cameras. So with this you, you put some color markers and we have been play we have playing with this. Uh, actually literally we have been playing with this. And the the and it will track the, the, the bow and also it will we have an like a augmented reality uh, 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 technique which give you exact the coordinates of the of the of an object uh, of a rigid object and then you can compute the, the, the coordinates of the bow or the or the bridge or whatever you want with respect to this. So this is the, the low end solution. You don't need to put almost anything in your violin, you just have a small marker, color marker in the in the violin. So um, uh, we, we expect also these projects, uh, in my experience, many of these projects happen that we researchers think what it would be perfect to provide to the uh, students or to the user, final users, but we, if you don't have a, a close relation with, relationship with them, then what happens is that what you produce is not actually what, what they really would have liked to, to have. So we have been conducting um, uh, in workshops with the students to ask them what exactly they use, how or which things they would see they would be useful to use in the future. And we have done once in Royal College of Music in London. On Friday, if anyone wants to come, we have one workshop from 11 to 2 with music teachers and students. And the idea is to discuss technology in this setting, in the music learning setting, and then we uh, get some feedback for developing the prototypes. The, the, we also have a survey, an online survey, that you can complete, it's just like 10 minutes or something that it asks you what you use, what your level of expertise in music and so on. And also we conduct workshops, we, this is the, this year is the ninth, is how time happens, uh, pass. It's the ninth year we, we uh, organize the music and machine learning uh, workshop and this year we're going to do it in the, in, in the area of, of music learning. Is in, in Italy in uh, in September. So uh, we have also to, to almost to finish. Uh, we have developed some initial prototypes. As, as, as we say, we present this prototype to the students and say what they think. They ask them what they think, and then we will uh, take this into account as feedback in order to to refine them. So we have prototypes. We, this one, which is if it has score, you can you fo it follows the, the what you have to play. Then it has the piano, the piano roll, and it, it tracks your, your pitch to see if you are in tune. It uh, tracks your energy, and then uh, you can also in, um, upload upload a, a expert performance, so you can see how close you are, for example, to the dynamic curve of the expert. We have some that are more game kind of games because they give you some scores for different parameters, how good you, you have done it. And also, uh, that I will recognize this, is, is uh, the, a web-based uh, uh, um, interface which you don't need to download anything into your computer. It runs through the browser and then through the browser you can play and it will tell you similar information to these two. So, that's it. Thank you. Really nice talk and, and 
work. Thank you. Uh, are you considering now that you have like that, that you will have the movements so detailed of the of the players, yeah. not just using it to 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 test performance, like to, to consider performance, but also like if the posture is correct for the body, because for example, I mean, normally when you're uh, learning an instrument, sometimes you have subjects specific of like uh, specific movements that you have to avoid yeah. when you're pl playing a, a instrument. Are you considering like also yeah. testing them and tell them like, okay, this is correct f in terms of performance, but not correct in terms of movement because it's a movement that yeah. will hurt you in yeah, actually, they are, they, are, they are very linked because, in, for example, in the violin, the, the, the posture will change your sound or your, the way you put your elbows. And the, so, but we, we are, of course, we are dealing with this. You can compare yourself with the, with the expert database. We have all the exactly, as you say, the, the movement. So then we, someone can compare their movement compared to the, to the to expert. And not only that, we are exploring now, right now sensors, which they have a nice sensor that, that has an accelerometer and, and a gyroscope but also has some haptics, it, 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 you can make it vibrate. So then you, it can probably stop vibrating when you have the exact position. So, so if, you, if you are going out, it will vibrate stronger, or very strong, probably put some electroshocks or something <laughs> to <laughs> encourage it not to make mistakes. But the, and, the, and then you can feel when you are doing it correctly as well. It's like someone holding your hand when you are doing it. Okay, thanks. Yeah. Any other? Yeah, Stephen. I wanted to know. Uh, um, I wanted to know. Uh, so you have all this numeric data about uh, how a person played with respect to an expert. Um, how, are, if, and how are you going to translate uh, these numbers into words that do not collide with the teaching methods, and whether there's a risk or not? Uh, um, in, let's say, uh, changing the way instruments are learned just because you're looking at uh, some numbers. And, uh, and how, if, if this translates into language, how are you going to um, surpass the, langu the, 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 the language uh, barrier, let's say, whether we're using English or Spanish or etc. Yeah. So what are your views on that? Yeah, but I mean, the, the, the first thing is that this is not really trying to replace the, the, the formal education. So this would be a complement. The ideal setting would be that the teacher is there, then they, they record, they can see them together, like look at here, you, you didn't do it correctly because look at some extra information. Sometimes it's difficult for the, for the, for the teacher to to objectively or use very uh, accurate adjectives. They say, no, it sounds too woody or too bright, too, I don't know, it, this is uh, still, and each uh, prof uh, professor or teacher can use different uh, terminology. So this would be a concrete way to go and both the student and the teacher see, well, this is not going right because you can see your tuning is not, is not uh, there or the, some timber aspect is not, is not uh, as, you, as it's supposed to be. But the, the main idea is that we don't want to, to, to change uh, how music uh, instruments are learned. We want to complement or to, to add uh, information so they can, it can be used by humans. So it's not going to be a complete automatic system. Does that re replies your question, Esteban? <laughs> <laughs> okay, anything else? Well, I guess uh, we're done. Uh, so uh, thank you, Rafael, and thank, thank you. you for uh, staying. Well, this has been uh, quite nice. I think it's the first time that in our department we have uh, had this uh, type of workshop where we have been able to see quite a lot of the research that is going on in the department and, and uh, in the context of a, of, a, of a project that basically would like to uh, help all these projects uh, to have a better impact and, uh, and to uh, promote collaboration among all, us, all of us so that uh, maybe in, uh, next year, when we have uh, the next workshop, we see that uh, we have been improving and we have been uh, really doing uh, interesting research and uh, with a high impact, which is what we should all aim for. So thank you for uh, coming and uh, thank you all for uh, being here and, uh, and all the people that are not here, but that has helped uh, in organizing all this. So thank you. <laughs>